I feel our friendship really started when we bonded over fertility treatment. Yeah. You have been, I'm going to get emotional, but so important to me in terms of my journey through something very hard. And I'm so, I'm so lucky to have you in my life because you have been able to share your wisdom with me in really tangible ways. You went through 17 rounds of IVF, mm. multiple miscarriages. You have your beloved, wonderful daughter. I just wanted to ask you about that experience, really, and how you kept going, because, again, I'm sure that there are people here who will want to hear you speak on that. It's, um, I think it's something that... It's like if you have a child, you don't... To look back on it, you don't remember the full sense of what it was because you, it softened, you know. So that journey is softened because I have Lila in my life. So as soon as I kind of knew Lila was going to be fine and whatever, then it just took away all of that journey. But it was a journey. And the thing probably that was interesting is I didn't know if I wanted to be a mother. And in my 30s, I, I had a mother who I loved, but for many years we didn't have a good relationship. And she had a complicated life with my father, and there was a lot of deception, and there was just a lot that went on that was never, ever discussed. So my respect and my relationship with my mother was really challenging. And to an extent where I would be very, I'd be so angry, you know, and I, you know, I remember just wanting to Hit, you know, it was so, it was really... So when you've had a very difficult relationship with your mother, it does make you wonder, should you be a mother? So I, in my early 30s, I was thinking about that. At the time I was with Susanna, and she was, you know, having Joe, and then she had Esme, and, you know, I was seeing her of this journey of being a mother, and to begin with, it was just an infringement on what we were doing. You know, we started this <laughs> online business, and it was 19... Um, 99 and you know I was working 16 hours a day and Susanna had had Joe and I said why aren't you here it was eight in the morning she said I'm breastfeeding I said but what, how long are you going to be you know that was literally I was just I wanted to ignore the fact she'd had a child because it really affected mm. what we were trying to build that's how I, I placed it and then I you know these children were part of our life and I got to know them and Susanna is a phenomenal mother and I just thought, God, that's the joy this gives her is tremendous. So then I kind of thought, mid-30s, I, I would like to be a mum. And I hadn't anyway had protected sex for ages, so I knew there'd probably be a problem, um, because I just, since I was 30, I just had sex without any protection. And um, so I just <laughs> There's thought, a whole chapter about that in the book, there yeah, isn't there. <laughs> so, I just, so I just, you know, Johnny and I went to see this really nice woman called Dr. Wren at um, the Lister, and, you know, we had this unexplained infertility. So, um, so then we started on this journey, and um, it just went on and on. So I, I, I got pregnant, and then I lost it, and then I got pregnant again, and then I lost And it just kept going, and some of them were... You know, I look back now and I think it was a bit challenging because I was in the middle of what not to wear and I had a miscarriage in the middle of filming and I just didn't tell anyone, you know, just carried on with... You know, it's like it was just sort of... Because I thought, there we go, and then you're used to seeing blood in your knickers and you're mm. looking for blood in your knickers, you know. And so that happened a few times. And the last time it happened, I had to give birth. So that was, you know, just like... Um, and then through this... Um, also, my relationship with Johnny was a bit challenging, and he was not always well, and he sometimes went off and tried to get well, and he was on one of these trying to get wells, and um, Mary called me up and said, look, I've got some frozen sperm, do you want to use it? You know, and I was like, all right, but absolutely no thought that anything's going. And I went and I had, I had it, you know, shoved up with the turkey baster, mm -hmm. baster that way, because I'd had all the operations and everything. Shoved up. And I literally left, went, went about my business. And I just thought, and I put it out my head. And then I went to, um, it was day 13, and Mari calls me up. She goes, you know, usually I, I, the morning of day 12, you're saying, can I come in for the blood test now, please? And I haven't heard from you for a day and a half. And I was like, 
you know, I, I've even... It's not happened. It really hasn't happened. And I've even bled a bit or something. I think it was even day 16, and she was like... So I go in, and she says, you're pregnant. And I just couldn't... Be I couldn't believe it. I really... I remember, actually, I couldn't believe it. And then... Johnny came back, and then we were kind of like, you know, excited. But when you've had quite a few miscarriages, you, you're really fearful of being excited. And I had to have this horrible injection every day, which stops you having miscarriages. And I went to America with Susanna, and we did the Oscars with Diana Sawyer on the red carpet. And um, we're both on the red carpet, um, you know, with Diana Sawyer, oh my God, and excited. And then we both start bleeding. Susanna is also pregnant. And we get back to the hotel, and we both see blood in our knickers. And I think, that's it, you know. So I call my lovely man, and I say, I think I've, I've lost it. And he goes, when you come in, come in via the hospital, and I'll give you an ultrasound. And I remember going in, but I really felt that resignation. And I remember going in, he had a mobile thing, and he put it on my tummy, and it was boom, 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 boom. And I was so, you know, I think that was that moment when I thought, I'm really pregnant, and something really wants to hold on here after this journey. And... And then I, she never um, kicked Lila because she was upside down and back to front. So I never felt her move, which was really meant, I kept feeling I'd lost her. So the pregnancy wasn't great in that because it was just this heart in the mouth. And then I went for a scan. I was meant to have a uh, C-section. And then anyway, I, I went for a scan about eight weeks before. And he said, you're losing fluid. We have to go in now and have the operation, you know, have a cesarean. So I did, that was a bit traumatic. And then she was born and Johnny brought her out and I said, how is she? And he went, she's fine, but a little problem with the feet. And then he pulled back the thing and her feet were totally back to front. She had double talipes. And I remember looking at her feet and thinking, she's never going to walk. So I, I think there was always this, you know, thing. And then um, she had all her feet up to here broken, every bone in her body, and they reset them in these casts. And I remember I have these pictures of her literally this size um, with these casts, which we had to change every, every sort of 10 days. Oh, my God. So it was just, it was a... And then when, by the time Lila was six months old, I then realized I had a baby. You yeah. know, I realized I had a baby that was going to be with me and would grow up. You were so in the process that you couldn't step back from it almost. I mean, talk about fear. You were probably beyond that, that fear. Was, into I mean, that, was, that was that and a permanent fear. Lila, beautiful Lila, who many of you will be familiar with from yes. Trini's Instagram, <laughs> she is the dedicatee for Fearless. Yeah. Is she in many ways the love of your life? She is the love of my life, you know, beyond anything, really. And, um, and I think that we've been through a lot together. Um, and... Yeah, she is the most important person in my life, by a mile. 